guys, my name is Alessandro and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a full face of cream products. Everything, including eyeshadow. I'm gonna avoid using powder even to set my face. I just wanna see how it looks. Typically, the day after I shaved, I shaved yesterday, powder doesn't even look good on my skin, so I think this video is like perfect for today. Okay. So this video is going to be for like my natural girlies, for the ones that want to look like they're not wearing much makeup, but still kind of like catfish, you know, and like have a whole new different face with minimal products. Usually I use like 50 products on my face all at once, but today I'm going to try to keep it cute because, you know, we won't be using much powder to keep everything in place. So let's start off first. By priming our skin I'm going to be using this Dior Forever and Everwear primer it has SPF 20 and it's a water-based primer when you're doing your makeup make sure to check what your primer and foundation is because if you use like a silicone based primer with a water-based foundation that could be why your foundation is not looking the best And now I'm going to go ahead and set this primer using my MAC Matte Fix Plus. This actually has powder in it, but, you know, that doesn't count. But what I noticed that when I set my primer with this, my skin just looks so flawless. This basically creates a barrier between your skin and the makeup and really helps with oil control. And I actually do notice a difference when I don't do this step. This will just make your skin look so airbrushed and like glowy from within, but not necessarily like oily, you know? Like you look luminous, but like from within, not just hella oily like I tend to get. So I'm just going to spray this on my sponge. I kind of prefer to only use a setting spray for this. I typically never use it like at the end of my makeup. I don't notice it doing much of a difference with like the mattifying side. I think you really have to prepare your skin before you use any makeup in order to actually keep your skin looking matte. So now that I've let that set for a second, I'm going to be going in with the Hollywood Flawless Filter. This could replace your primer. However, I still like using a primer because I'm on the oily side, but this makes your makeup look so beautiful. I like using this just like under any foundation and with foundations I'm not that much of a fan of this makes them look better I don't know how it just does it literally just makes your skin look luminous glowy from within my favorite however not like greasy so let me apply this real quick I also use this like to mix in different products for example like in my cream highlighter not that I don't like my cream highlighter it's just that by mixing the cream highlighter with this, it just makes it more skin-like and it just really melts into your skin. If you just want to use this Hollywood Flawless Filter without foundation, it just makes your skin look prettier. It doesn't have like any coverage, but it will just give you like a little bit of a glow. Next, I'm going to be going in with my Dior Face and Body Foundation in the color For Warm. I love this foundation. It is the most skin-like foundation ever. The reason why I'm going in with this today is because, you know, we're not using any powder. And this foundation, you could get away with not setting it with powder. Especially if you're dry to normal skin, you will definitely get away with not setting it with powder. But let's see how that works for me today. This is a water-based foundation too. And the coverage is... A light coverage but you could build it to a medium and the finish like I said it's just skin like it's just soft it's not like matte but it has like no like luminosity to it you know it just kind of looks like your skin this in my opinion is the perfect everyday foundation I mean if you don't have like a lot of stuff to cover up because like I'm blessed to have like nice skin at the moment but you know if I had like a face full of acne this probably wouldn't be my favorite because it doesn't have 
that much coverage. I've been recently into this Real Technique sponge. For like the longest, I've just been into using beauty blenders. I don't know why. I just felt like they would perform better, but to be quite honest, this Real Techniques kind of like snaps better than the beauty blender. I love the fact that it's flat. It's almost like patting in your foundation like with a brush and you get a little bit more coverage. I also noticed that this is less porous than a beauty blender. So that means you waste less product when using this. So I'm pretty satisfied with how this foundation looks. I don't want to add another layer. However, I do have some spots that I want to conceal. So I'm gonna just pat that same foundation on those spots and basically let it sit for a minute to build a bit of coverage and to kind of dry down. And then I'll go in and blend it out. I'm not gonna use concealer today. I'm actually not a fan of concealer anymore. I've completely given it up, cut it out of my life, which is kind of tragic because I have so many concealers that are going to go to waste. I've been really into using foundation as concealer. Like, it just performs so much better. Foundation is thinner than concealer. However, it still has a pretty decent amount of coverage depending on what foundation you go in. And it will basically cover up your under eye circles as good as concealer. What I find myself doing is I'll apply concealer, like a light to medium coverage, medium coverage type of concealer, and then I will just spend a lot of time blending it out, trying to really get it to melt into my skin. And by doing that, I just take away a lot of the coverage the concealer has. I'm basically better off just going in with foundation because I end up taking most of the coverage off of the concealer. Foundation is way more buildable too. So just try it out. Like it really doesn't cost you anything to just go in with your foundation. It also sets better than concealer does. Like when you set it with powder, it turns so skin-like. Whereas setting concealer with powder, I feel like it just kind of looks crusty and crepey. So I'm gonna be using the Dior Face and Body Foundation in the color 3 Warm, which is one shade lighter than the one I use for my entire face, to still get that like brightening effect, you know? Actually, first I wanna go in with one small layer of the Four Warm under my eye, just to almost like color correct, because I do have a little bit of purple under my eye. Okay, I'm gonna do foundation on one eye to show you guys how it looks. So this is with the layer of Four Warm. And now let's do that three warm. I don't know if you could tell a difference, but I could for sure tell a difference in person. Honestly, today, like I said, is a lighter look, so I'm not going for that full coverage beat. Like, I don't mind my like vein right here popping out a bit or like the darkness to show a bit. I don't mind that. On some days I do. And when I sit down to film TikToks and to take pictures for my Instagram, I like doing a flawless full coverage, like flawless full, full coverage. Like I cake on the makeup. However, I still use foundation to conceal. I just use a foundation with a bit more coverage on those days. I use the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. And that foundation has pretty good coverage, especially for under your eyes. Like. I completely conceal my entire eye. And I love using that to conceal because it's dewy and it just sets great with powder. It looks so skin-like once I set it with powder. But yeah, I get that full coverage with foundation too. Okay, now let's do our cream bronzer. I love using cream bronzer. I typically always do cream bronzer no matter what. And depending on how like, snatched I want to be I'll go in with powder bronzer but if I want a more like soft glam the cream bronzer is enough I'm gonna be using the Huda Beauty tan tour and the color tan I'm typically the color light but I've been really tanning my body not my face because you know we're not trying to age but the light one is like basically too light for me like melt into my skin it's typically good enough but now I have to use the color tan 
I don't have much experience with Huda Beauty products. I, they don't like, how do I say it? It's not something that I typically go for. Her brand is not my aesthetic. It's very like full, heavy glam, which I do do. However, I do a like full, heavy glam flawlessly. Like I like my makeup to almost look like undetectable. My vibe is very Charlotte Tilbury, like full glam yet make it like runway or like make it Hollywood red carpet, you know? very like I look like this all the time and like Huda Beauty makeup I just feel like it's very like mask however these cream bronzers are not of the sort they actually are so blendable and buildable I you can build this like to like a very like snatched bronzer but a light amount goes a very long way I like to get my brush dip into it and then just rub the excess off on my hand so i'm just going in with a light amount this is enough for contour like i'm probably not going to contour today i think this bronzer this cream bronzer is like it's cool enough to contour and to like add some definition and it's also warm enough to just like make you look tan and i focus my cream bronzer on the sides of my forehead right here because I just kind of want to round it out a bit more and I just like lightly go over the center and for my cream bronzer I basically do like that like three that everyone does now I'm going to brighten my face I'm going to be using this YSL Touche Claw and I'm gonna mix a little bit of that Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless filter. Brightening my face is a step that I can never like just skip. Whether it's full or light beat, I just feel like it really accentuates your features. It's different than like highlight. It's basically like contouring is part of contouring. This really accentuates your features even more than if you just went with just highlight if you don't want to go out and buy that YSL Touche Claw I recommend just using a bright concealer but it has to be bright like do you see this like how do I show this on camera I put it in such an awkward spot she's white because you really want to have that contrast and I'm gonna apply that basically right here to lift my cheekbones and I'm going to blend this out into my cheekbones to make them pop and then just tap out the edges with that same bronzer brush wherever you apply this brightening shade is really going to accentuate your features like look at this side compared to this side like that's a whole different person then I'm going to apply some of this on my chin to accentuate a bit and on the bridge of my nose. And I'm going to apply it like thicker up here and kind of slim it down towards the tip to give me that pinched nose effect. Y'all need to really brighten up your bridge of your nose because it makes such a difference with your nose contour if you have a like hump on your nose i would recommend and it's something you want to conceal or something you want to like kind of tone down a bit put the bright shade just on top of it and under it don't necessarily put it on the hump because bright colors will always pop they will always bring out the features where you place them on and just a little bit of the excess i'm gonna put it right here to basically like bring in my nose a bit now i'm going to be going in with an angled brush and with the excess bronzer shade that i dipped into right here i'm just going to rub it and do my nose contour and i place my nose contour on the bridge of my nose you want to do it on you don't want to do it on the side because that would make it wider however i place it a little bit towards the side and then I blend it up into my eyebrows because this elongates our nose and I want that because by elongating it, you do make it look a little bit slimmer and then just brush it down. 
Anyway, that's a really easy way to just contour your nose by just going off with the excess product in your hand because like you will never go in with too much. You will always just have a, a light contour and if you don't like it, like just pat over it with your beauty blender. Now for our blush, we're about to be done with our skin. Actually, we just need blush and highlight. For our blush, I'm gonna be using this Nude Sticks Dewy Nudies Bloom. These are everything. Everything of the sort. I love these blushes. They're not like sticky, but they are a little thick. However, you don't feel them on your face but they do make your skin literally look like glass skin. Like this is why my skin always looks so dewy because of these. And they work great on top of powder. I actually prefer to use them on top of powder because it just brings the life back to your skin. And the like dewy luminous effect actually lasts for a like pretty long time. Like it wears well throughout the day. And I'm applying my cream blush Right here, I'm focusing it because I want to lift my cheekbones and I'm blending it out up here into my apples of my cheeks. My I say apples of my cheeks without smiling. Like, these are not the apples of your cheeks. Like, just apply them on the high points of your face because if you apply them when you're smiling, it lowers. And you don't want your blush right here because this will just make your face looks saggy. It does not flatter anyone having your blush right here. Trust me. If you want that heavy blush on your cheeks, uh, just apply it right here. Right here will like do great. It'll really emphasize your cheekbones. Blend it out into your nose. Like that will look great. I kind of blend it out right here because I do want to make my cheekbones pop just a bit. And then I blend it up to snatch my face up and to lift my cheekbones even more. Okay. Now it's time for cream highlight. I'm using the Dior Face and Body Glow. This is my favorite highlight. It's very thin, blendable, and it has like a gold undertone, which is perfect for me. I'm a gold undertone. And I mix my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter just to make it super skin-like. It's great on its own, beautiful, however, I just love mixing this thing into like everything. Makeup is something that like you should just play with. Like don't use everything just for its use. Like use cheek products like all over your face. Like use highlight products like on your eyes. Like I love applying highlight right here. Just have fun, mix stuff, like mix foundations, add a little bit of primer into your foundation. I love using these. Um, the Farsali Skin Tune Blur and mixing it into my foundations in silicone base because that is like a silicone base thing. But yeah, I just love acting like a little scientist mixing my stuff. So I'm applying that highlighter right here on top of my cheekbone and I'm gonna blend it out up here. And also, I've been into applying a little bit of highlight right here. I feel like it makes your skin look so, like, juicy. And I'm applying that highlight just on the bridge of my nose. I'm going to do my eyebrows real quick off camera, and then we'll be back for the eye. Okay, I am back from doing my brows. I think I'm going to film a brow tutorial because I have a lot of tips and a lot of opinions on what brow products are the best. So yeah, that might be coming soon, but let's move into this eyes. Okay, so first things first, I want to basically sculpt out my eye a bit and like snatch them, make them look a bit more lifted. So I'm going to be using my Huda Beauty Tantor, the cream contour and the color light. And I'm just basically going to apply it on the outer corner and wing it out to, like I said, snatch my eyes. And I'll lightly just bring it in just a bit. If you have almond shaped eyes like me or hooded eyes like I do, you want to focus all your dark products right here, all of them. You don't wanna really bring them into this area right here because it'll just make your eyes look smaller. Okay, that is that eye. 
Next, what I'll be doing is I'll be using my Benefit Go Go Tint. These are some lip and cheek stains, but the reason why I'm using this is because this is like water, like it's so thin, and I feel like it'd be perfect for my eye area. I'm gonna be going in with the color Cha Cha, which is like an orangey color, like a corally color, and I'm just gonna be blending that into my crease. And I'll apply this on the inner corner because it's like a brighter color. This is honestly like the prettiest eye look ever. Like it's so soft. It literally looks like your skin is pink. Because like, you know, with eyeshadow, you could always tell it's eyeshadow, but this just looks like your eyelids are pink. Like there's nothing on them. It's just naturally like this. I was thinking of using the Stila Shimmer and Ghost since you know that's a cream product. However, I think I wanna apply gloss today. Gloss on your eyelids, so underrated. It is literally immaculate. It does crease like, you know, where your eye creases if you have like a hooded eye. However, it just rubs off real easily. And it just makes your whole makeup look just immaculate. Like you look wet. Gloss needs to be more of a thing because it looks literally ethereal. So I'm gonna do the other eye off camera, but this is how this turned out. This whole look, I don't know what you were expecting, if you were expecting like a full cut crease, but like I said, it was gonna be for the natural girlies, and I don't know, I feel like I just walked out of the ocean. So wet, so dewy, and yeah, let me do the other eye and we'll get back to our lips. Okay, so I did the other eye. It took me like about two minutes. And now I'm gonna do my lips. I'm not gonna line them. I don't care to. Today's look is very natural. I'm gonna be using this Pat McGrath Bronze Temptation Lust Gloss. It's from her Mini Trios. And I'm just gonna do a thin, 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 thin layer. Oh, this is a little too thick. Okay. I think that was enough. But I'm actually gonna layer this. I just wanted the color of this gloss because I feel like my eyes look a little bit red, which I like. But I wanted the little bit red tones of this gloss and I just wanna add on top my Dior lip oil. I feel like this one would go really pretty. And the color 012 Rosewood. This is a perfect neutral gloss, like, ever. And it literally looks, oh yeah. Yeah, this look is so immaculate. I'm glowing, look at this. Wow. I don't understand how people don't love dewy skin. I feel like dewy skin is everything. It just looks so beautiful, immaculate. Like, I can never do the matte look. First of all, it doesn't look good on me. It emphasizes my texture. And I just feel like my skin looks like deader than a cardboard box. Whereas dewy skin, Gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's set my face with the, let's set it with the D-Slick. Cause you know, all cream products and no powder. And that is it for today's look of all cream products.
I'm living for this. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. This is a pretty simple routine that I pretty much do all the time, except the eyes, I've never really done this. However, my face routine is typically this on like, you know, when I wanna go out, I don't do much of a full glam. No, I still do a full glam, but I do have a lighter full glam, a more natural full glam, which is my favorite to be quite honest. I feel like the best type of makeup is the one that you can catfish into people thinking that it's your skin and that that's how you naturally look. So yeah, this is kind of how I typically do my makeup all the time. I hope you guys liked it. Try out some cream products. Cream is the way to go. Powder is just not it, sis. It's not. Cream products are everything. Cream highlighters, cream blushes. Y'all need to try those. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!